Today, we're gonna to be taking this plain wall in our basement and turning it into this feature wall. Let's get started. First things first, we need to remove this central vac that is right in the center of our accent wall. It's kind of an eyesore, and I'm going to basically take out the central vac port and relocate it later on. However, I'm gonna take it out right now and patch up that hole. After removing the port, I'm left with a hole in my drywall. So I bought a small piece of drywall from Home Depot and I was able to cut that down a little bit larger than the hole itself, about three inches. That's gonna give me an inch and a half overhang on all sides of that hole. Then I could trim the back side of that drywall and remove the pieces from the drywall, leaving just the paper. Then I applied DAP's Drydex joint compound all around the hole and adhered that patch of drywall that I had just made. I was able to squeegee some of that joint compound out from behind the paper and get it nice and smooth. And then I coated the whole thing with a layer of joint compound, came back and sanded it smooth, and then we were ready for paint. To make the painting process a little bit easier, we went ahead and applied the first coat of paint before the battens went up on the wall. To get started, I worked on the top board first, and for that, we're gonna be using a pre-primed one by four. I went ahead and cut down those boards and mitered the corners for the outsides, and then came back and measured for the top board on the front of the wall. Now this feature wall is gonna be a board and batten wall, so I knew that the board of the board and batten is actually just gonna be the drywall that's already there. So the battens themselves are just pre-primed one by twos, and now with the top board installed, I can go ahead and measure and cut all of those to fit. Now since the studs behind the wall are going vertical, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to secure these battens to the studs. In order to secure these battens, I had laid a thin bead of DAP's Dynagrip Heavy Duty Max along the back side of those one by twos and then tack them in place with one and a quarter inch brad nails. For the corners, I needed to take two one by twos and assemble an L and I did so first on the ground, making sure that the edges lined up perfectly. After I got the L assembled, then I could secure it to that corner stud using two inch brad nails. With the battens all up, now we can move on to the painting process. However, before we paint, we need to make sure that we caulk in all of those battens so we don't get any of those shadow lines behind them. To do so, we use DAP's Alex Flex, which is a great caulk for this application. With the caulk dry, then we can move on to the painting process, which actually turned out to be a lot more cutting in with all of these battens and all around the doors and the walls and whatnot than we expected. However, cutting all of that in and then coming back with a roller made this wall a completely different wall than we started with. For the paint color, we went with tricorn black, and with two coats of that on the wall and the battens, it really looks great. However, we wanted to really set this wall off by making a personalized sign. For the sign, I started by cutting down quarter inch MDF with my track saw. I was able to use quarter inch MDF, and that's gonna give me a nice smooth surface, and it's also an affordable alternative to plywood. After getting it cut down, then I can move on to priming and painting that MDF. MDF sucks up a ton of paint, so a layer of primer is gonna save you on paint, although I still had to put three coats of paint on there just to make sure we got nice, even coverage. For the frame, I went with red oak, and I started by ripping just a little bit off of the back, about halfway up off the back of that red oak one by two, and that's going to allow for the the MDF to recess into the frame just a little bit. Once I got all of those boards ripped, then I could move on to mitering those corners. With all the wood cut down, then I can move on to bleaching the red oak. Now red oak is obviously called red oak for a reason. It's very red, especially when you apply a finish to it that really brings it out. So we were able to bleach it using a peroxide first, a peroxide wash on the one by twos, and then come back and apply a lye water mixture and lay it out in the sun. And that takes a lot of that red out of that wood. After bleaching the wood, then we could wash it down with clean, fresh water to remove any of the lye that's still on the surface and apply a wipe 
on polyurethane. For the design itself, I was actually inspired by an Etsy sign that I saw, and I'll link down to that one below in the description. However, I was able to replicate or come very close to and make it how we wanted um, using our Cricut vinyl cutting machine. Once I got all the vinyl cut out on the machine, I was able to weed out any of the negative spaces and get rid of that and apply it to the transfer paper, which was a little bit more difficult than I thought. I was then able to lay that vinyl out on top of the white MDF and then I taped it in place so that it was right where I wanted it. I laid it back and then peeled off the backer off of that transfer tape, leaving just the vinyl. Then I was able to fold it back over right in place and squeegee it down and then remove that transfer tape to leave a perfect sign. Now it's time to put this sign together. So I started by assembling the frame using Weldwood Instant Wood Adhesive on all of the miter joints and then pin nailing all of those together. Once I got that done, then I could flip it over, lay the sign on top and come back with my stapler and staple the MDF to the frame itself. With the sign all assembled, now we can mount it to the wall. I made sure it was nice and level and plumb and centered on the wall and then I attached it to the battens using two inch brad nails. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We absolutely love how it turned out. I can't imagine, or I couldn't have imagined this beforehand, this blank wall turning it into what it is now. It really differentiates the space, breaks up this big wall behind me, and we've got the personalization of the sign that looks pretty sweet, if I don't say so myself. If you guys want some more information on this, make sure you click that link right there, and that is going to take you over to my website. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you hit that one right there so you don't miss out on any future videos. Until next time, be safe and happy building.